Let me welcome you to today's coffee hour. First of all, uh, thank you for coming here. This is a new location for us. And we're very excited about this new partnership with the Seattle Public Library. As you can see, we're in a larger space. Um, we, we have um, great sound today, which is uh, being broadcast live currently on Facebook, but we're working it out to where it can be broadcast uh, through other systems to community centers, senior centers, and other places where people can watch you without having to travel to downtown. My name is Lenny Orlov. I'm with the Human Services Department at the City of Seattle. This is a program of Age Friendly Seattle, which is an initiative that the City of Seattle had signed on with ARP Washington uh, and the World Health Organization to make this place uh, a good place to grow up and grow old. So again, welcome to the coffee hour. Uh, a couple of housekeeping notes on the part of uh, Human Services Department. We use microphones for sound amplification. We do that uh, in order to, to provide, uh, you know, an opportunity for everybody to, to hear this well. We are also broadcasting live, as I mentioned, and so every word that's spoken here has to go into this microphone so then people elsewhere can also hear and see us. Um, we have two interpreters here today, so if you're using an interpretation device, uh, please uh, also wait for a microphone so you can speak your question in your language. Then the interpreter will speak the, the interpretation of your question into a microphone. And, and that way, everybody knows what is being asked and what, and then the speaker, of course, will provide the answer. And on that note, I would like to welcome today's speaker. Elsa Batres Boni is uh, with the Seattle Department of Neighborhoods. She's been working with the census for a while, as you may have seen uh, in, in one of our YouTube videos. By the way, if you're not already subscribed to our YouTube channel, you can uh, look for Aging King County. Uh, and uh, uh, subscribe for, for interviews for upcoming events. And these events are every third Thursday at 10.30 a.m. right here in this room or sometimes uh, in the room ac across the way, but always on this fourth floor in 2020. All right. Thank you all for coming, and here's Elsa. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for being here. I'm so excited. How come you decide to come to an event on a, what day is today? Thursday morning, when it's so sunny out there. Were we expecting it to be rainy? And let's just go and talk, just go and hear somebody talk instead of being outside. Thank you for having me. My name is Elsa Batres Boni. If you have, uh, if you are around five, six year olds, my name is like frozen Elsa, the princess, but I am not a Norwegian. I'm actually from Mexico. I've lived in Seattle long enough for the last 20 years. So I, I call Seattle my home and I'm very excited <clears throat> to be here. So we have some um, people with uh, interpretation equipments. So in Russian and in Amharic, is that right? And so if I speak too fast, please uh, interpreters also let me know, but if uh, you also have a question, please make sure to uh, raise your hand and I will be happy to answer. Thank you for being here. In that note, we're gonna be talking about the census. So I get a prize for somebody who can tell me, not the person who speaks the language, how do you say census in Russian? How do you say? Okay, I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you, I just learned it. Pierre's piece. Pierre's piece. Got it? More or less? No. Can, can you guys say it? Pierre's piece. Okay. Anybody want to give it a try? <laughs> okay. How about in Amharic? One, two. In Amharic? Pierre's piece. Pierre's piece. Okay. Better? Okay. How about in Amharic? I'm going to say it. Gibbs. Kotara. Did I just kill that one? Hizb Kotara. Gibbs Kotara. Yeah, yeah Hizb Kotara. Gibbs Kotara. Okay. 
Let's talk about the census, okay? Why are we talking about the census? I work for the city of Seattle. The census is a program and it's an operation that is run by the federal government, by the Census Bureau. It's an agency run by the federal government. I tend to give this presentation to um, a lot of people and when there are people in the crowd who are really young, I like to ask, do you remember doing the census? When does it happen? Do you remember how often it happens? And when was the last time? Every 10 years, right? I like to tell and ask the crowd, where were you 10 years ago? And usually I have colleagues who say, I was in elementary school. <laughs> or I have friends and colleagues who said, I'm, I was not even in the country 10 years ago. I don't know. So I'm gonna ask you, what is the, uh, do you remember what were you doing 10 years ago? 2010? What were you doing? Some, la some important landmark in your life. You, you were doing the census. <laughs> Anybody? Anybody else? What were you doing 10 years ago, sir? There's a wait for the microphone, so, and then I'll give you a chance for people to think about. What were you doing 10 years ago? Uh, got my first civilian job after retiring from the military. Okay, that's a big landmark. Yes. Anybody else? Ten years ago. Any first grandkid or? Ten years ago was my first year in Seattle. Okay. Yeah. Where did you come from? Uh, Clifton, New Jersey. Okay. Another part of the, of the country. Ten years ago, I didn't have kids. That was another life. It was, I was single and happy and I could do my thing at night. That's not happening. Yes. Yeah, 10 years ago, I had my first granddaughter and I went to Mexico and I stayed with my family for half a year. Oh, wow, that's a great landmark to remember. Okay, so I bring up 10 years because the census, it is, uh, uh, like you know, it's a basic count of the population, right? We need to know if we're going to have a party, how many people are coming, how many people are going to feed, all of the things we need to, um, to know how many are there in the country. But because it happens every 10 years, people tend to forget why is it important and how does it work. So every year, every 10 years, the census Bureau has to uh, remind us and let us know that it's coming, it's happening, and it's important. But there are some things that are different about this census, and this is why I'm here to talk to you about it, and also um, to ask for your help, to uh, see if you can help us uh, get the word out about doing the census and why it's so important. So by the end of my conversation with you, I'd love for you to learn why is it important, and um, how can you um, help out um, with this? Okay, let me see if I know how to do this. Technology. Who loves technology? You love technology? What do you like about technology? It improves my life. Does it? Does it I can keep in touch with my grandchildren. That's how my grandchildren. What else? Why, who says here? Who said here that they love technology? Here. Over here. It allows you to connect with the world, quickly research ideas or questions, and uh, enjoy a wide variety of entertainment. That's great. Okay, so who has challenges with technology? Who has found it a little bit difficult to navigate technology? Tell us about it. I don't have uh, inter I'd go a little lower. I don't have an internet connection to my house, and so technology is uh, kind of a mystery to me. It's a mystery to you. What else? Who else has? This? I have a love-hate relationship. I, I like everything that they have said, but I hate it because it breaks down. It's um, inconsistent sometimes and can be hacked and all kinds of things like that. It's true. Sir, over here, and we may need your help. Uh, 
تكنولوجي سفيو كتن ميغون على ما كفيو كتنو تكنولوجي هاز ا لوت اوف نوليدج اند يوزد وورلد وايد ساريا بمن نوربت بيت وسط ايه لعلم اقربوا لنيا ازيچو ايالن التماچاچم يا بيت يا من نوربت اكبابي اغلغلوتون ماغنيت بتام اسچگرال nice and good as it is where we live now we we're not getting uh, good services of the technology in in our residence thank you so i love how you put it which is like a love hate relationship right we love it because there's a lot of benefits and we hate it because sometimes it doesn't really it's not as easy for us um So we're going to talk about the challenges of the census. So let me give you just a general information of what the census is a reminder. I know a lot of you have lived in the same place for a long time and some of you may not, but you have probably gone through many censuses. Is that right? So the census is an official count of the population. It happens every 10 years and usually the day of the census has been April 1st and this coming one is right around the corner. The census is important for three different reasons. It determines the allocation of money, resources for certain programs. It determines uh, representation, we'll go about that, electoral districts, and also it gives us data about who and how and where lives in the United States. There is a big challenge. Not only it happens every 10 years and we have to remind the population that it's coming. There's usually a large uh, number in the population that gets undercounted. The census bureau likes to call it hard to count. I don't like that term because I'm part of that group. I like to say they don't know how to count me. And I like to call it historically undercounted because that puts the barrier, that puts the attention in the barriers, not on the people. And so we're going to talk about those challenges. Why is it why is it important? And why is it different? And how what can we do to help? So in 2010, Seattle had a one of the highest responses rates in the country. So the census the census has gone from being somebody who comes at your door and asks you questions to what they call it self response. So in 2010, if you lived in Seattle or if you lived in the US, you received a questionnaire in the mail and then you had to fill it out to say information about the household as well as the people who live in the household. And then you had to return it by mail. That response rate in Seattle was one of the highest, 77% of it. Uh, the the national rate was 72% of the population who actually responded to the census that's a pretty good number still there's a lot of folks who didn't do it and a lot of folks who were undercounted in 2010 that's when we found out the the zip code 98118 was was one of the most um, diverse in the nation uh, does anybody here live in that zip code 9 8118 you used to okay it's 98118 it's columbia city hillman city a little bit of uh, rainier beach all of that <clears throat> south of seattle we also learned that there was one in five residents uh, who was foreign born so seattle changed and we we show a different picture of what seattle has been in the last 200 years 150 actually since the foundation of the so What are we talking about money? How does this work? So I made the analogy of a party, right? If you're going to have a party, you need to know how many people are coming so you know how much food you're going to buy and who, how many people you're going to feed. That's the basic uh, idea. So based on the results of the census, that's how we find out how many federal resources we get back uh, in the state in the form of programs so for instance 
the state of Washington receives about received, and this is in 2017, received about $14 billion in programs based on how many people live in the state and based on the results of the census. This money comes in the form of programs. These are just an example, like Head Start for kids, SNAP, which is food stamps, Medicare, Medicaid. All of these programs are funded by taxes federally. This is not just money that we use. This is money that we contribute and we make it happen, right? So an example of 2017 is that Seattle, for instance, just for one program, received $82 million in direct and indirect federal grant revenue, and 45 of those were directly to the Human Service Department. This program here is part of the Human Service Department of the city. A lot of programs uh, that we all use are based, that they receive money based on census results. Thank you. Somebody just asked me to go slower. Thank you. I get really excited about this. Thank you for asking. So it is about money. The census is about money. How much money we're going to get in federal funding for programs that we use. It's about data. The census tells us what and who and uh, ages, gender, and different information about the population who lives in Seattle. This was the results of the 2010 census. Do you think Seattle is going to look like this in this time around? It's going to be a little bit different. It's going to be very different, and that matters. That matters for a lot of different reasons, right? I like to say then that the census is about money, yes. Then it's about truth. How do we really look like? How old are we? What are we going to be needing to plan for the next 10 years? What do cities have to know about our population so we plan for roads, for medical facilities, for hospitals, for retirement homes? for different programs that we are going to be needing. So responding to the census means that we will get this information um, for better planning. So my millennial folks, do you guys have millennials are, uh, around you? Do you know who the millennials are? Young people, right? Much younger than me. And they're like, why do I need to get this information? Doesn't Amazon know this already? Don't they know so much about me? Well, it's true that there's a lot of information out there, but the government uses this information for resources and uh, planning. They don't use the Amazon data. They don't use the Facebook data. They use census data for planning. That's why it's so important. Finally, I like to talk about how the census is about power. So we all know that the state and the cities and counties are divided by electoral districts. How do we divide the districts? How do we have electoral districts? Well, it is based on the number that comes from the census data. So, these electoral districts are based on the same amount of people in each district. So that if the population grows or moves, we have to change these lines. And that's how we get, uh, in, in a, uh, that this is how we get a um, representatives. So even if you can't vote yet, or because you're too young, or you still are not a citizen yet, um, it still matters because electoral districts exist because you live there, you make up the population. So I like to say the census is about money, it's about truth, and it's about power. It's a very important thing. And because it happens every 10 years, we forget that it's important, and then we have to remind everybody. What is different about this census? Every year, every 10 years, the census has the same challenge, reminding people that it's important and we have to do it. 
This time around, we know it's a little bit different. There's a lot more distrust for the government, and justifiably so. Some of communities have been heavily uh, attacked in many different ways. So there's a lot of distrust. It's a challenge this time around for the census. This census will be for the very first time ever. It's going to be online. So remember we talked about technology? We love it because it makes it easier in some ways, but it's also challenging. So you will be receiving a piece of in the mail that invites you to go online and fill out the census online. That's a big challenge. It's not going to be the only way. You can still do it in paper, and you can do it on the phone. But the, the online will be the main way to answer the census. Another big challenge was that because of the census dedicated most of their funding to make and modernize this uh, census, um, they cut 30% in their outreach budget. So they had a lot less people out there like me talking to you about the census. It's very challenging. So this is why the city of Seattle, even though it is not a program of the city, it is not a program of the, of the, not even the state, it's a program of the nation, we stepped up and said, let's talk to our communities because we, this is important and what's at stake is so big and we need to do something about this. Who are the most um, undercounted communities? Remember what I said about how the census calls it hard to count? I do not like that term. I'm going to say it again because I am part of that community and I am not hard to count. They just don't know how to count me. And I am not hiding. I am just having a life like everybody else. There are barriers. There's language barriers, busyness, life you sometimes don't even know. You're, you know. So think about this. There was a group of um, about 20 percent of the population who were undercounted. This is from a Harvard study. There was a big group that I like to point out, which is the uh, kids under five. And when they asked me, um, I ask, why? Why would kids under five? Who has grandkids here? Who's got grandkids? And who's got grandkids under five years old? Well. The, when, the, when I ask and I say, why would, they, uh, when, well, why would they go under count it? And they said, oh, I think they forgot. I was like, no, you don't have a five-year-old. You don't forget a five-year-old. That's what you live for. And besides, even if you don't, they're like right there in front of you. There are complicated reasons of why people don't participate. Maybe they live in a non-traditional household. Maybe they live part of the time with mom or dad or the grandma or auntie. Maybe they live in, um, maybe they uh, live in, a, in a, an apartment building where they're not supposed to have more than a certain amount of people and then they are wor worried that they will share this information and it will impact their day-to-day -day lives. There are many reasons. For instance, if kids share custody with a, in divorced families, they have to be counted in the household where uh, they live most of the time. And that information sometimes is missed and people don't know. So there are many reasons why the census uh, undercounts people and that's why we're here to, for your help and to uh, get your information too, to help us do this work. Um, here's the, t the timeline of what's it gonna be. And let me ask you a question. When you receive, or when you've done the census, who does the census count? Who do you have to include in the census? If they ask you, who lives in your household? Who do you have to include? The answer is every person who lives and sleeps here most of the time. Everybody who lives and sleeps there most of the time. So, like I said, by March, this is, and now I know the dates exactly, we didn't know them, but by not, March 9th, everybody will receive a piece in the mail that says go fill out the census on this uh, website, and um, by mid-March, uh, between mid-March and mid-April, you will receive reminders 
And by the fourth reminder, then you will receive a person knocking on the door um, at your place asking you to do it. Um, this is what the letter would look like. It will have a uh, uh, address to go on the internet and a census ID. It's a unique ID for your household. Yes, sir. Is the city, state, or the federal government going to do anything for people who do not have Wi-Fi access at their home, who don't own a computer, who don't have a smartphone? Are they going to send out a list of sites that are available for people to go to to complete the census? Yes, great question, because that's exactly where people think right away. And not only, even if you have internet in your house, you may need some help. So one example is our great friends from the Seattle Public Library. Yay! <laughs> They are our favorite partners, and between Seattle Public Libraries and uh, community centers, every um, staff member will be prepared to direct you to get help. S libraries will have uh, computers available um, to do that, and we will have actual days on April 1st um, where we will have a table outside with volunteers and staff helping people fill it out. So, yes. And thank you for that question. So you can go to any community center or Seattle Public Library for support, and they will point you out to a computer. And if you need specific help, they will tell you to come back on April 1st, where there will be people to help you um, do that. Yes. What type of question? Yes. Question. Question over here. Just wait for the microphone so people can hear you. I'm good at yelling. Well, my question is this. Uh, like Seattle housing, they have the low income housing. So what they gonna do, send someone to the building? Because a lot of these people don't speak certain, they don't read it either languages and all of that. And then each building has this certain mixture of people. So they got maybe send two or three people to each building. How are they gonna do that? How are they gonna do it? Yes, good question. So the census, uh, the letter will come in um, English. There's, there will be in the bottom an option to say you can call to this number if you have questions in uh, 14 different languages. And I have flyers for you to take at the end. I like to give them at the end so you don't just uh, put them and stuck them back. But you, you can call a number in different languages for help. But remember, the first one is going to be online. So you are going to get an invitation to go online. And when you go to the website, you can click and there are many different languages where you can do it in. Uh, online as well but people will not come to you to people's doors until uh, after mid-april it's going to be just an invitation on the mail at first um there's a question in the back too let me just get let yeah thank you thank you the form that you just showed before it said census id what is the census id yes and, and where do we get it yes Good question. So in order to make sure that they're not double counting, each address, not the people, but address, will have a unique ID. And that ID will come right there. Right there, it's not there right now, but this is where it will say, this is the code of, your, of the address of your home. If you do not have that ID, you can still fill out the census, but you have to just enter your address, your full address. If you're in a high-rise building, then is there a separate number for each unit? Yes. So every single uh, household will have an ID. And that was one of the operations that the census did in the summer, where uh, in coordination with the city to make sure that, for instance, a place that used to be a house and now it's a seven-story building, they um, uh, change it and adapt it and adjust it, the new addresses. Yes. The questions are two types. One is about the household, whether the household is owned or rented, and about the people living in the household. And I will talk to you about if you live in a group home, if it, if it is more like a retirement place or 
a place where there's more than one people with an administrator. Um, does anybody live here in that situation? Or if you live separately, you will receive that invitation. But if you live in a group home, it's called a group quarter home. I can't remember. I'll tell you in a second what it's called. Um, they will. The Census Bureau will be in touch with the administ administrators of the home to count the people in the place. So you don't have to do it. The thing that you have to do is make sure that they you are being counted and that the household is being counted. This is what the paper questionnaire will look like. You will have an opportunity to request a paper form, but you have to request it. And they're going to push to do it online first. And uh, it is, you can re request it in different languages, um, but it will only come first in English. Safety. A lot of people have questions about protecting my privacy. There's a question over here. Um, so if it only comes, if it first comes only in English uh, and you can't read English, how do you request it in different language? Yes, I think in the very bottom it says it's going to have a small print that says you can request it here, here, and there. Uh, to be honest, a lot of this information, I'm still learning it from the Census Bureau because they're just uh, releasing it. So if people get the letter, the best way to do it is just go to the community center, the library, to, uh, to get help with that. How do you know that it's not the system, online system isn't going to get hacked? I mean, even the military has gotten hacked. The Pentagon has gotten hacked, so. Safety, security. How do I know that my information is going to be kept uh, confidential, right? So the Census Bureau, this is what I can tell you. The Census Bureau is is protected by one of the strongest laws we have in the country. It's called Title 13, which says that the census cannot share information about a specific household for 72 years. I'll get through that. I'll get to that. So for 72 years, the census bureau cannot share information out. They can receive information from other agencies, such as the U.S. Postal Office, or about uh, cities, about addresses, but they cannot share it back about an individual. So that's one guarantee. People who uh, work for the Census Bureau, they take an oath for life. They can be in jail for uh, five years or a fine of $250,000 if they were to share individual information. That's one thing. What we know about your question for, uh, first of all, is the system kind of break down? We don't know. It's the first time they're doing it. They've invested all of their money to uh, create a very strong system that would allow every single household to go online to do it. So we'll see. We'll see what contingency plans we have. And third, um, we don't know. I mean, we know they've guaranteed us that they've worked the hardest, invested all their money and intelligence to protect that information. And if that information were to be hacked, we will have, I mean, I was just in a call, which I understood half of it, all the protected walls and things and measurements they've taken to keep that information private. So uh, thinking of this young lady's question, about if the information is hacked, this slide tells you, as we like to say, PII, personal identifiable information that could be used primarily for criminal conduct isn't even collected. The primary information is an address and the number of people associated with it. So to a large degree, if the information was hacked, it's so rudimentary, it's not good for anything. They'll know that, hey, there's four children here and two adults in this abode. It's, it's not information that a criminal primarily would be useful for. Me as a researcher, I might want to know that, but <laughs> most criminals don't care. Thank you for that. I, I want to uh, connect this to my point when um, 
there have been some scams, and this is important for you to know. The Census Bureau will never, uh, the Census Questionnaire will not ask you about social security number. If anybody asks you for that, and I've seen letters out there asking already with the word census, social security number will never ask for it. Money or donations, anything on behalf of a political party, and nothing about your bank or credit cards. If you see anything, it has nothing to do with the census. Uh, here's another question. Here, here, and then back there. Okay, I think the Republicans have already used census uh, letterheads to ask for information, um, and I, I think that's kind of a, a, a I don't know, a kind of a, a sneaky way to do this. To just use the word census in a in a flyer or a, a, a solicitation, but yes, that's a letter I got. I got to that was last summer, and it was uh, it had the wording census, and it was a complete scam. Mm -hmm. Not really a scam; it was for different purposes. Yes, in the background. It's my impression, ma'am, that uh, Title Thirteen um, protects um, people. Um, information is not released to the public. But uh, during the time frame of World War II, uh, some Japanese folk uh, went to uh, court and uh, the judge agreed that the citizen could not be incarcerated without cause and they were not locked up. But the larger percentage of the Japanese uh, didn't see it coming and, and, and were locked up. So my question is, does Title 13 uh, um, um, make it so that um, most government doesn't have access to it or some government has access to it? That's, you know, that's my question. How available is it? Thank you for bringing that up. Um, it is definitely a big concern for communities because there is history of uh, uh, incredible unfairness when it comes to data protection. And what we know, what the Census Bureau has told us is that this is, uh, the Census will not share this information with any other agency. This is what the Title 13 does. It protects that energy, energy, that data to be shared with any other uh, agency. It, it's kept in the uh, Census Bureau for 72 years and uh, can only be shared aggregated in numbers, in large um, statistical information. So, of course, as a city and as a local uh, uh, government, we cannot guarantee that because it's not an um, it's not a uh, operation that we run. But we can be absolutely vigilant and know uh, if there's any break of this to make it um, a big noise. I would make. But thank you for bringing it up. Appreciate it. I'm going to move on to uh, one thing I forgot to mention is that last summer we heard a lot about the census and the citizenship question. We heard. Uh, president uh, wanting to uh, include the citizenship question, which the only thing it did is create this sen sense of uh, fear and not wanting to do it. And so what was interesting is that there was so much fight to not have the citizenship question in it from community and advocates, and we won. We actually won. The citizenship question is not going to be in the census questionnaire. It was a big victory for community advocates. But the sad part is that it created an impact already. People don't know that the citizenship question will not be in the census questionnaire. And this is due to an extreme and hard work, uh, work of, of activists. And so we have victories that we need to celebrate and we need the media and folks and community to know that it's not there so people uh, is not confused. And one question, I have something about census taker jobs, and I had so many people asking questions about jobs, so I was hoping that you might be able to discuss that. And I'll also pass this out, and I'm just curious, is there anyone here that's interested in census taking jobs? If you are, just raise your hand. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and pass this out. Yes, thank you. That's what, it's part of my slides, and I'm going to move to there quickly. Yes. So the Census Bureau is right now desperately looking for folks to apply. And peep, these are jobs, they're well paid, and they're like very um, flexible in terms of time. Uh, 
and they take a long time to respond, but they are looking for folks. So this is, this is what I like to say to people. Some community members will get the invitation to participate in the census, and they will not do it either because they didn't understand the letter or because it was piled up with the many other ones. And so fourth reminders, and then they're going to have the Census Bureau is going to have what they call the follow-up operation, which is if you did not fill out the census online, then I'm going to go and knock on your door. We want to have people who are community friendly. They're part of our community to go and talk to our neighbors and our friends. So if you have time, if you can do it, we want, we as a city would like people like you to go and be the census uh, representatives to go and talk to community about what this means and basically have the conversation that I'm having with you with community. So thank you for bringing that up. The, um, the flyers have all the information how to apply. You have to apply online. So come to the library and get some help. And they are hosting different recruitment um, uh, events. Do it. They, especially if you speak another language, they are looking desperately right now. I get an email like, please, please. Is that a question? Uh, how do you count people without houses? Good question. Um, who are uh, experience homelessness, who don't have homes. So the Census Bureau has the main uh, um, operation is called self-response online. That's what you're going to do when you get a, an email in the, I mean, a mail in the, a piece of, of mail for you. For people who do not ho have homes, they have a different operation. First of all, the Census Bureau is going to go to what they call service-based locations, food banks, shelters, and they're going to talk to the administrators and see how many people do you have to make sure that they get counted. For people who are not living in shelters or are living in encampments outside, um, they're going to also have people going out there to count them with um, tablets and devices to count them directly. But if you know somebody that is experiencing homelessness and doesn't have a specific address, they can come to the library to places like this and also enter the address where they, they that they use to receive mail or to use services and sometimes they can use the sh shelter ones or um, they will find an option of where do they live so so that's that's th does that answer your question um, it's going to be challenging but um, when people ask me should this person be counted in my home sometimes they sleep here Maybe part of the year they come. What I think, what I let them know is I say, think about it this way. Think about it for the next 10 years. I had somebody who said, I'm pregnant. I'm going to have a baby in June. Do I count my baby? <laughs> and that's a good question. And it's not philosophical, let me tell you. It is, you need to think about it in the, in the terms that I said it. it. For the next 10 years, think about if that person is going to use resources if they're going to use representation, and if they're going to use, if they're going to be part of our data. Is that right? So then count them in your home, even if they spend part of the time in your household. I have a related question. Uh, what if I live aboard a houseboat uh, that has no fixed mailing address, and um, how do I get a census ID so I'm not undercounted? Yes. Um, so P.O. boxes. If you have a P.O. box, where do you receive mail? Oh, okay. You can go online. You can go to the library, get online, and still choose at the most approximate address that you have. They will match it at some point. If it's a private address that doesn't show um, um, that's a good question. I'm going to have to follow up on that because I believe that is part of the, uh, how do you receive mail? You receive an email? Hmm, that's a good question. I'm going to have to get back to you on that one. I don't know. 
So boats don't have a specific? OK, good question. I don't know, and I don't want to say something that I don't know. So I'll follow up with you and give you my card. Yes, that's a good question. I don't hang out in boats that often. I have a question. What's, uh, day, is this all supposed to be done by the 1st of April? So uh, be done at that time? Good question. So the census, the census day used to be April 1st historically, but now because it's online and it's going to be a uh, portal, it will be open until June. Uh, we don't want to tell people that because what happens when you have extended deadlines? You don't do it. The biggest push will be to do it in April, all April. It will be open, the portal, online portal will be open between March 12th and June 31st. Is there a 31st of June? No, 30th, sorry. <laughs> it will be open online until then. The biggest push is to get everyone to be counted in April, but you can do it during those months. Here's another question. Uh, yes, I have a couple of questions. One goes back to your first slide, I believe it was, yep. where you said 20% of the population is maybe undercounted. Does that mean 20% of the population would not be counted? Okay, just wanted to cl for clarification. In other words, does that mean the anticipation is that one in five would actually not be counted? Mm -hmm. Okay, as opposed to a population that is not going to be accurately counted. Do you see what my, my question is? No, but I'm interested. Okay. So give me, let me try again. Okay. My question is, uh, do you have that slide? Yeah, I'm looking for it. Oh, here? No. Okay. I think. One in five, let's see, 20%. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. Well, somewhere. Okay. I think Let's you see. meant another one. I think okay. I, I think I, I did mean another one. There, that's it. In 2010, about 20% 20 of the population was undercounted. Does that mean about 20% of the population was not counted? Yes. Okay, just clarification. That's pretty frightening. Yes. Uh, okay. <clears throat> the other question I have is, I believe it was earlier in this year that there was some publicity about the Census Bureau not being adequately prepared for the census, and meaning, yes, probably not funded, I assume. Yes. So uh, the question is, in light of the situation that existed then, are these problems now fixed, or are they anticipating continuation of the same issues that were identified? It's been a really challenging time to work for the Census Bureau. I don't work for the Census Bureau. I'm luckily employed by the city of Seattle. But the Census Bureau employees have had a really hard time. People who have worked there for many years have worked into very different circumstances this time around. They've had a lot less information. They've had a lot less resources to work with. They've had a tighter and more strict um, uh, information to share, like what can they say, say or not, and it has continued. Let me give you an example that by 20, in 2010, in the November prior to the census, they had, in November, they had hired 200 uh, census field workers to be doing what I'm doing right now. This time around in January, they had 20 for the state of Washington, 20 people versus 200 that they had in 2010. So the 20 people working here, it was like 29 actually, 29 people in Washington state are going everywhere trying to talk to, but what can you do? I mean, it's, it's just physically impossible to have these conversations with community. One thing I wanted to bring out is that the Census Bureau was known to have the best swag ever, swag. Free things for the translators, free things. You know, little bags, toads, Seriously, in 2010, the Census Bureau had census lip balm. <laughs> it was ridiculous, right? Because they know that we like free stuff. I mean, it's just, I'm going to do a study. 
I go to the Seattle Center and I come back with tiny little toothpaste for my daughter just because they're free. I, you know, I don't need them, <laughs> but we like them. The Census Bureau does not have that this time around. It was their way of advertisement, right? They sent us a link to Amazon to buy our own. <laughs> and so cities, what we did and what we've done is just to try to come up with money for community to do this work. And so we partner with the Seattle Foundation. We put out uh, organizations to do this work. There's so many uh, African-American organizations, uh, East African, homeless, different groups to work with us to uh, have this communication with community and tell them this is happening. And so we've created some swag, not as fun, but I have some for you. Oh, my button. I have a button that says, I love census data. And also, if you want to become a census connector, I'd love for you to wear it. And if you're a media, social media person, who has a Facebook account here? OK, yes. Because if you go to any younger crowd, they don't have Facebook anymore. They're on Twitter, and they are on Instagram. And Facebook is going out, my friends. We are getting obsolete. But still, for your friends and your family who still follow you, if you take one of these, I would ask you to take a picture and say, I had a conversation about the census. Would you do something like that for, for the census? Yes? Then you can have a button. I have a button. We have decals for your, for your car. I'm going to pass them around. We have pens. These were not done by the Census Bureau. Actually, these are from the state who helped us put it together. I'm going to pass it around. Make sure that you do something with your swag and share it. And uh, the other thing I wanted to share with you is that we will have assistance centers here at the library. You can be a volunteer. If you're interested in being a volunteer, helping other people, um, I think the best way is to contact. Uh, we'll send you an uh, a link or some. What's the best way for people to know? They can go to our website to sign up to become a volunteer. You can talk to your librarian about becoming a volunteer to help other folks do the census. And, and my, our website, where you can get information. Um, I don't know how to get out of here. And could you also mention, I, I didn't get everyone who had questions about jobs, because there were some persons that, how, how would they access that? Yes. The, you can go to uh, census.gov, and is the first thing you're going to see, which is apply for a job. So apply for census. You can do, you go online and do census.org. Go talk to a uh, library representative. They can take you there. We've been having conversations. They're getting actually trained to uh, get all these details and information for you next week. Um, but yes, let me just give you some go to the website so you know this is a website that we put together at the city to help uh that has resources where to go about the assistance centers um where can you get help with this public library and you can and for the jobs if you want you can just literally type and you will get it right there any other question yes and how do college students get counted? Good question. If they live in a dorm that has an administration, that's when they are going to be counted as a, as a group quarter. If they don't, they will receive a letter in the mail. If they live in a household with roommates, this is going to be fun because they have to decide who's the head of the household. And they have to uh, fill it. Well, that person has to fill it out. Well, I have to ask this. Um, so all software that's going to be used for the first time has been tested. No Iowa caucus situations. Thank you, everybody. Yes, absolutely. Thank you. And uh, just one question. When is the census? When are you going to receive an uh, invitation to go online? Soon. That's great. <laughs> Do the census. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.